Super Mario's Jump to 3D began with a party to which you're invited today, where you'll discover a bunch of secrets, so you better not be late. Okay, let's start with the secret ingredient of the princess's cake, which is to hit the like button, subscribe to our channel, and turn on notifications. That way, you'll never have to worry about missing our videos about facts and Easter eggs. Now, here are 25 secrets of Super Mario 64. When Mario obtains a superstar in Super Mario 64, he does a twirl and spins around. But this wasn't originally intended. Mario was actually gonna do a little dance. No, not that one. This one. In the end, it was discarded, but it did look cool, didn't it? On another note, before hiring Charles Martinet as the voice of the protagonist, Super Mario actually used these other voices. Those are sounds that Nintendo borrowed from a Warner Brothers library to experiment with the game's beta. It feels cheesy, so luckily it ended up being very different. They say that each and every one of us has a dark side, and many of you may have discovered that by throwing a baby penguin off a cliff. Come on, don't be shy. Admit it, you did it too. If you ever feel ready to do some good deeds, you can actually teach the baby penguin, named Tuxy, certain movements. If you slide on the ground, you'll see the baby penguin imitates you. Isn't that adorable? It seems like it's from an episode of Pengu. Once you return the baby to its mother, if you decide to break the parent-child bond, Mama Penguin will chase you angrily. Why are you running? Why are you running? Oh yeah, and now that we're talking about penguins, the penguin that appears in the race will gain a few extra pounds if you challenge it after getting all 120 stars in the game. I'm sure it ate them all. Listen carefully to what Mario says when throwing Bowser. Now, what do you think he says? A, so long gay Bowser. B, so long king of Bowser. C, oh no, explorer as browser. We won't reveal the answer yet, but for years, most fans heard Mario shouting, so long gay Bowser. There was quite a bit of commotion about calling Bowser gay. So Charles Martinet, the voice of Super Mario, clarified it on Twitter, saying that Mario actually says, so long king of Bowser. Sorry to all those who voted for the internet explorer option. There's more. In in Super Mario 3D All-Stars for Nintendo Switch, it was replaced with a bye, bye as it's a very special version of the game that we'll talk about in a minute. In the Bowser in the Sky level, you can find columns with strange drawings. They depict the original Super Mario from Super Mario Brothers facing Bowser and spitting fire, a nice nod to the roots of the franchise. In the castle courtyard, there are boos that laugh in a particular way. At first, it may seem like an ordinary laugh, but if you slow down the sound, <laughs> you'll hear Bowser's laugh. So the boo's laughter is actually Bowser's laughter sped up. Mystery solved. Initially, the paintings in the castle were divided into three vertical sections. If Mario entered a painting, he would appear in a different area depending on the section. This was discarded in the final version of the game, but the idea was used for the wet dry world. Depending on the height at which you enter the painting, the water level would start above or below. Did you ever find it strange that weird smoke Mario emitted when burned? The texture that was supposed to be used in the game was this, but due to an error in the code, the image gets corrupted since it's not properly registered. It's not actually known whether this was intentional or not, but the error still remains, even in the 3D All-Stars version for Nintendo Switch. In fact, some fans on the internet have fixed the issue, and this is how it should look in the final version. For years, it was believed that the background of Wet Dry World belonged to a photo of a town in southern Spain called Casadas. Though it always just seemed strange that Nintendo used this photo for a Super Mario game, but the truth is even crazier. The real origin of the image is a mix of the city of Shabam in Yemen combined with the Muhammad Ali Mosque in Cairo. If you overlay the buildings, the silhouettes match and the mosque was added later. 
After obtaining 120 stars, you can climb to the castle's rooftop, where, for some strange reason, Yoshi lives. When you talk to him, he says, it's been a long time since our last adventure, referring of course to Super Mario World. The dinosaur must not be very good at writing, because on top of speaking very little in the game, he has some spelling mistakes too. It may seem strange at first, but Miyamoto said that Super Mario moves like a hamster. In fact, at the time, the creator had a pet hamster at home, and Mario's movements were inspired by this domesticated rodent, not a kangaroo as we thought. But if you think about it, it does make sense. Besides, it's not the first time a hamster has completed a Super Mario level. And now let's switch from rodents to lagomorphs, specifically to Mips the Rabbit. This yellow rabbit that you can catch to receive a star wasn't originally intended to be in the game. It was used as a test character during development. Does Mips sound like a strange name for a rabbit to you? Well, actually, Mips is an acronym for the Nintendo 64 CPU. Oh, and one more thing about the rabbit. When you catch Mips, it says that it's in a hurry because it's late for an appointment, a reference to the rabbit from the popular story Alice in Wonderland. Land. Mario's face that appears at the start of the game wasn't planned for Super Mario 64. It actually belongs to a discarded prototype called Mario Paint 3D. Miyamoto mentioned that the development of the game ended up becoming Mario Artist Paint Studio, an exclusive game for the Nintendo 64 DD in Japan. We'll talk more about this version of Nintendo 64 later because it holds the key to the sequel of Super Mario 64. Let's talk about Mario's enormous and three-dimensional head again. If you press the Z button on the screen, everything will be filled with Mario heads. This Easter egg is exclusive to Super Mario 64 Shindo Edition, an enhanced edition of Super Mario 64 released in Japan to add rumble functionality. <laughs> This version also fixed some errors such as the backward long jump that allows speedrunners to skip a large part of the game. The Super Mario 3D All-Stars version for Nintendo Switch is based on the Shindao edition. Therefore, it's not possible to perform the backward long jump and pressing the ZR button fills the screen with faces. In the Iwata Asks interview for The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time on Nintendo 3DS, Yoshiaki Koizumi, Super Mario games producer, revealed that the protagonist was originally going to ride a horse in Super Mario 64, but that that idea was eventually discarded and and used an ocarina of time instead. Which, uh, yeah, good call. Because watching a plumber on top of a horse just feels weird. Although, while well, they actually had considered turning him into a half horse in Super Mario Bros. 3, but that's a topic for another video. You won't believe it, but Super Mario 64 was supposed to have a multiplayer mode, and Luigi was gonna be the second character. This was revealed in the Iwata Asks interview for New Super Mario Bros. Wii, where Miyamoto mentioned that Mario and Luigi could be independently controlled in split screen at early stages of development. This was one of three modes that were planned for the game. Another mode was played without splitting the screen and had a cooperative style. Finally, months before release, all of Luigi's content was cut, and the game went from being called Ultra Mario 64 Brothers to Super Mario 64, completely excluding Luigi. But then, after a major Nintendo leak in 2020, it was discovered that Luigi was among the original data of Super Mario 64 and his original 3D model could be extracted. In the 64 Dream Magazine, Shigeru Miyamoto confirmed that they were working on the sequel to Super Mario 64 called Super Mario 64 2, and it was going to be exclusive to Nintendo 64 DD. However, this console was a complete failure, and Super Mario 64 2 ended up becoming a GameCube project under the name Super Mario 128. This star-shaped statue has driven fans crazy with theories for years. It has led to some of the most absurd ideas, like making Mario do 2,401 spins in the fountain to unlock Luigi. Some people think that the sign reads Eternal Star because it has a stone star on top, but for the vast majority of users, the sign reads L is the real 2,401, which can be understood as Luigi being in the game, and this would be a clue to unlock him. 
Another theory said that to unlock Luigi as a playable character, you had to collect 2,401 coins, which supposedly was the total number of coins in Super Mario 64. After that, you had to return to the fountain where Luigi would be waiting. But Mario, your brother was neither in this castle, nor at the fountain, nor at his house. The truth of the story is as follows. Nintendo confirmed in a letter to a fan that the inscription on the fountain doesn't say anything. The developers left a blank blurry text on purpose to drive fans crazy, and I guess it worked. In fact, in the Super Mario 3D All-Stars version for Nintendo Switch, the sign is one of the only objects that doesn't have any improved textures. Over 25 years later, in the game's code, an unused and quite peculiar enemy named Motos was found. So somebody compiled the character's data to make it appear in the game, and the result is a bob omb like creature with small arms resembling a T-Rex. But the best part is, if you get close to it, it'll grab you and throw you into the fire. It seems likely that Motos were supposed to be present in the lava world, but they were ultimately replaced by the bullies. Additionally, data for a springboard to jump jump on and a blarg from Super Mario World were found. The latter was never completed and later appeared in Super Mario Galaxy. The world of Super Mario 64 holds some pretty bizarre secrets. In the shifting Sandland level, you can find some butterflies that catch your attention. If you hit them, there's a 50% chance they'll turn into a 1-Up Mushroom. Although, if you're unlucky and get the other 50%, the butterfly will transform into a cannonball. So be careful! If you spin around the tree trunks, coins will appear out of thin air. Free money! And if you jump on the edge of the castle's pond, there's a small chance a fish will appear and jump with you. The book that comes with the 25th anniversary edition of Super Mario contains conceptual art from Super Mario 64. Some of them were used in the final game, such as running away from giant rolling rocks or swimming in water. Others come from previous 2D games like wall jumping, which was later recreated in games like Super Mario Sunshine. The tackling concept from this image was eventually added to Wario's moveset, while other concepts were used years later, such as walking on a giant piano, as seen in Super Mario 3D Land for Nintendo 3DS. The song that plays when Mario wears the wing cap originated from the powerful baby theme from Yoshi's Island when baby Mario obtained the superstar. One of the paintings in Peach's Castle has a reference to the Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. Specifically, we're talking about this one. If you pay attention to the pattern followed by the brightest shining stars, you can identify the same positions they have in the musical notes of the Song of Storms from Zelda Ocarina of Time. Maybe the message Al is real doesn't refer to Luigi, but to Link. Can you imagine? In any case, this of course could just be a simple coincidence, but both the development of Super Mario 64 and Ocarina Ocarina of Time shares some textures and fun references. Have you ever wondered what happens to the coins that Bowser drops when you defeat him? In the game's beta, Bowser gave coins as a reward for defeating him, but this was ultimately discarded. Nevertheless, Nintendo kept the coin explosion in the final version of the game. Oh, and in this same beta, Mario was gonna have a life counter similar to a watch, and the game worlds were gonna have a map in the upper right corner. This last element appeared in Super Mario 64 D. Yes. If you defeat King bob -omb in bob -omb Battlefield, a third black ball will appear at the base of the mountain when you get back to this level, implying it is in fact King bob -omb, or at least its remains? Similarly, when you defeat the Womp King in Womp's Fortress, a new tower will be built at the top of the fortress, also implying that the remains of the Womp King were used for this new architectural project. Surprise! Bowser's Endless Staircase isn't actually infinite. It repeats the same section of the staircase over and over and over and over. Now, in order to make this illusion more believable, the developers place paintings on the signs to give a sense of continuity to the space and adorn this deadly and frustrating staircase with a never-ending melody. This also has a trick. Nintendo used an auditory illusion called Shepherd to create the song. To put it simply, it's kind of like a barber's pole that seems to move infinitely, but here it's using musical notes. And one extra fact, if Mario remains still for a few minutes, he'll fall asleep and start saying words in Italian. Ha, ravioli. This tradition continues in Super Mario Odyssey, where Mario has quite entertaining dreams with Princess Peach. <laughs> Peach. 
<laughs> if you enjoyed this adventure, don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss the upcoming videos. And just for you, here are some more videos about Super Mario and Nintendo facts and Easter eggs. See you next time!